Welcome to your weekly airplane news updates. This is the week of January 17th, 2022. This week we get four stories. The first one is the EPA is about getting ready to declare leaded fuel hazardous. Uh, this is an ongoing saga that we've been talking about for a while. Uh, we have an EV talk from Ziva, which is just bizarre looking. So I want to show you some videos of that. We have the Strata Lounge aircraft that is going to complete their, that just completed their third flight. And then lastly, we'll talk about more of another saga, which is the 5G saga. And uh, there's some uh, some sizzle going on between the FA and, uh, and the other guys that are putting 5G out there. So let's get to it. Well, before we get started, this is our first year anniversary of this Airplane News. I want to thank you all for watching. Uh, this wouldn't be here, obviously, if you guys weren't watching. So uh, we've been uh, putting out a lot of good stories this year, and uh, we're excited about another year of doing this. So thank you for watching, and uh, and, and as always, uh, just leave your comment down in here. We're always happy to interact with you guys. But uh, the first story we're going to talk about this week is the EPA is getting involved with this whole leaded fuel uh, shenanigans that has been going on, not necessarily with the one in California that we've been covering, but the FAA says that they've announced that they intend to declare leaded fuel to be environmentally hazardous. Uh, what this means is they have a press release that says EPA is to evaluate whether lead emissions from piston engine aircraft endangers human health and welfare. Um, this is nothing new, quite frankly. I've been in aviation for basically 20 years and I've been hearing from uh, people that said that unleaded gas is not going to be existing uh, anytime soon, and I've been hearing this for 20 years. Now, I'm not saying that it's not going to happen. I'm just saying that this is an ongoing story for a very, very long time. Uh, the EPA is scheduled to study this and uh, to find out what's going to happen. Well, they have 24 months to figure it out. Uh, there's other types of fuel that's out there. That's called the G100UL, and um, that essentially costs about 60 to 80 cents more per gallon, but in the long run, this is actually a little bit better for your engine, so the maintenance costs might actually be reduced. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm all for uh, the environment and, and being conscious about the environment, so uh, we'll see what, what comes out of this. Uh, this is uh, uh, obviously going to be have a pretty big effect on flight school. It's going to have a big effect on uh, people that fly in their own aircraft, especially if the price goes up another 60 to 80 cents uh, per gallon. So we'll keep you updated when we have more. But in the meantime, let's move on to the next story, which is the Ziva EV Tall. This is one of the most bizarre flying thing that I've ever seen, uh, except if you've seen a flying saucer, that's pretty much what I expect a flying saucer to look like uh, if it was drunk and flying sideways. And uh, this thing is... Um, is designed to take off vertically. It's an eVTOL, electric vertical takeoff and landing. And then it's designed to switch to a horizontal flight um, when it gets up at different altitude. Now, what I don't really understand is how, if this is going to carry passengers, if it is going to carry passengers, I don't know that for a fact, uh, where they're going to be. Are they going to be actually uh, standing up on the vertical side and then they're going to be horizontal during flight? Or it just looks like an uncomfortable position to either be on takeoff or to be in flight. Now, if they're not going to be carrying um, uh, any people, then I guess it makes sense. It doesn't matter really which way the thing is is facing. But they said they've, uh, they've, they, they did their first uh, untethered flight that was unmanned at the moment. And then the aircraft completed a series of different maneuvers. They went to hover, a simulated taxi, and then a vertical climb. And they said that the aircraft is, uh, has completed over 50 tethered flights so far and that uh, it's designed to have a 50 mile range and then a cruise up to 160 miles per hour. Uh, now, if this works, quite frankly, I wouldn't mind having one of those to get to work every single day. Just take off, uh, go horizontal, get there, and then you probably get there in a few, only a few minutes for me because I don't live very far from work. But uh, this is cool. I love new technology like this. I, I think uh, it'll be interesting to see where all these EV tolls go, but uh, I have uh, full faith that this is the future of aviation and, and where we're going to see this going in the future. All right, the next story this week is coming us from Strato Launch. You may have seen that aircraft. It's this gigantic uh, carrier that's designed to basically carry a smaller hypersonic and, and aerospace vehicle underneath it. Uh, completed it is uh, its third test flight, and it reached an altitude of 23,500 feet and then cruised at an airspeed of 180 knots, which is not a whole lot, but uh, really all it needs to do is 
take these vehicles up in space or close to space and then is essentially let them ship out uh, so they don't have to burn fuel in order to get up there. Uh, this was a four hour flight. Uh, it says that it has a maximum takeoff weight of 1.3 million pounds, 1.3 million pounds, uh, having a capacity of 500,000 pounds. So it can carry a pretty darn large uh, vehicle underneath it. Uh, the uh, the Strider Lounge vehicle is called a Talon A. We've talked about this a couple months ago. Uh, there's some cool pictures. This is a really cool device. Again, kind of futuristic stuff. I love this kind of stuff. I think this is cool, especially taking us closer to space and, and space flight. Uh, something that I, I know a lot of people, including myself, have been doing for a long time. So, um, <laughs> the next ongoing saga. I, I can't just not laugh about this because it is so ridiculous. Uh, we've been talking about this 5G thing for a long time now. And when I say a long time, this has been a couple months where the FAA is just going back and forth essentially with these um, uh, service providers, AT&T and Verizon. And they have uh, yet again, AT&T and Verizon yet again delayed the rollout for uh, for their 5G um, well, expansion. And uh, and I love this quote. I'm going to read you this quote. This is coming from, uh, I'm actually not sure who this is coming from, if it's coming from AT AT&T or Verizon, but it doesn't matter. And it says, at our sole discretion. Now, I'm going to tell you something. When you start a statement by saying at our sole discretion, it means it wasn't at your sole discretion, okay? At our sole discretion, we have voluntarily, and you say voluntarily right after that, agreed to temporarily defer turning on a limited number of towers around certain airport runways as we continue to work with the aviation industry and the FAA to provide further information about our 5G deployment. All right, I love that last sentence. Since they have not utilized the two years they have had the they have had to responsibly plan for this deployment. Essentially, a nice little jab at the FAA saying, "Well, listen, you had two years to figure this out, and then now we're about to roll out, and uh, and then you're finally figuring out that this is going to have an effect." Now, I'm not going to disagree with them actually uh, with AT&T and Verizon. It feels like uh, a major issue here with the FAA that had uh, plenty of time to make this work and, and figure out a plan of action, and then uh, kind of waiting until the last minute. This reminds me of my college students that wait until the last minute to uh, write their papers and then submit them. But um, we'll continue to keep you posted on this uh, shenanigans and how it's going to affect uh, travel in and around major cities. Uh, the FAA has published, I don't remember how many hundreds of NOTAMs last week, and um, it, it's just a major crap show. Anyways, all right, this is all I have. Uh, like, subscribe, leave your comments. We'll keep you posted again next week and uh, have a great week.